Ready, coach three? Sure. Uh, Arno, we'll start with squad news, please. Uh, there's quite a bit to get through as well. First of all, Alisson, how ready is he to return and how careful have you got to be with him given he's had these injuries before? Uh, we're careful with everyone, uh, especially when it comes to muscle injuries. But um, he's uh, he's back in training with the goalkeeper uh, coach. He's not training with the team yet, but uh, that is expected to be uh, to be done soon. Uh, and then let's wait and see where he is in terms of match fitness. Um, but he's getting better and better, but not ready to play uh, Sunday. Uh, Trent, Virgil, Jota. Harvey Elliott and Chiesa, how about that as well? When you started with Trent and Virgil, I was expecting a different question. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so do it one more. <laughs> do it one more time. Uh, Trent first. So Trent first of all, then there's Virgil. Obviously, he was sent back on medical grounds. Um, Jota, we knew yeah. was due back round about this time ish. Harvey Elliott as well and Chiesa. Yeah, uh, Virgil is is is, is all good. Uh, he's training with us uh, today. Uh, Trent isn't training with us yet um, but he's getting there so we expect him to be back with us soon then we've got oh, there were so many names Harvey is training with us again so that's the positive thing he's been out for uh, for, for many weeks but he's on a, on a training round again with the team so that's a, that's a positive uh, thing for him uh, Jota is still apart from the group same as Federico who's coming back into the session maybe in one exercise today so they are all expected to be back within now and a few weeks. But yeah, the, the last part of recovery is always the most difficult one. So um, let's wait and see. But Virgil is, is completely okay. Did I forget anyone? No. That's no? Everyone. Okay. Thank you. Uh, obviously, five points clear at the top of the table at the moment. That can swing very quickly, in, in theory at least anyway, particularly when you've got Manchester City to come in the next two league games as well. So how much... Do you, do you enjoy the position that you're in leading from the front map? Mm. Yeah, it would be a bit strange if I would tell you that I'm not enjoying uh, being in the position we are in now. But we also understand that uh, it's only 11, game, 11 games now. Yeah. So that's uh, a lot of games have to be played. And uh, we all know uh, that, that the teams we face in this league, they are able to have the same run of games as we have. So if we want to stay where we are, we have to keep bringing the results in, which is not going to be easy starting on Sunday. Uh, although everybody maybe uh, feels like, OK, they are bottom of the league at the moment, but they don't play at all like this. Uh, they made it very difficult for the teams that are top three, top four, top five. Their playing style is um, very interesting. It was a, was a joy to watch their games because uh, they have a very interesting and nice way of playing. So it's going to be a difficult one, especially after the international break, uh, which is always a difficult one for everyone. And the first two times we played at home, now we play away. So another challenge. Um, and um, yeah, like we said, we like to be where we are. And if we want to stay there, we have to keep on winning games. Can I just ask you as well how you view the long-term challenge now as well, now that we know that Pep Guardiola is going to be sticking around at Manchester City for another couple of years? Yeah, that's good news for City, first of all. <laughs> and also good news for the for the league, because I think uh, everybody wants to be, to have the best managers possible around over here, the best players uh, over here. And he's definitely one of the best managers, maybe the best manager of the league. So um, uh, if you look at what he did in the last few years, four times champions in a row, I think. Yeah, so it's fair to say that he's maybe the best manager in the league. Um, so that is, a, that is a good thing but on the other hand they have so many quality players that if he would have made the choice to leave the club I, would, I wouldn't have expected them to end up tw uh, bottom of the league next season so um, but yeah good for the City fans and interesting for us as managers to keep on facing uh, one of the best managers uh, football has ever had Thanks Hi Good morning um, You've got an incredible run of fixtures coming up, <clears throat> Real Madrid, City, other games as well. Do the, will that have any impact on your team selection at Southampton this weekend? We indeed have an incredible uh, fixture list coming up, starting with Southampton. 
and that is always by far the most important game uh, so and 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 if you want to en- enjoy or you want to go into the games the other two you just mentioned is the best thing you can do is always with a win so uh, it has no effect at all to my team selections uh, the other two games but what does have an effect is the playing style of Southampton, uh, the, the the players coming back from South America, how fit are they, uh, the injuries that we that we have, the players are coming back. So that is the only thing that has something to do with the team selection. Not at all the games that come afterwards. You mentioned Paulsey's top against bottom in the Premier League, but does the strength of the Premier League show that Southampton could still be a capable team? <clears throat> <laughs> I would say much more than a capable team. If uh, I think uh, I've seen them already playing against City, against Arsenal, uh, and against Wolves, uh, those are three games I've seen already. And with two more games coming, uh, two more days coming up, I probably see one or two more. And they've shown that they are f- uh, very, very capable of playing teams uh, like us. Uh, I think it was against United where they where they had a penalty first. So uh, they've been, in my opinion, a bit unlucky, but their playing style has been excellent and they've been into almost every game. They could have got a result in almost every game they've played. So um, I know everybody is looking at that Madrid and City is difficult, but in my opinion, Southampton is going to be a difficult one as well. Right. Arne, uh, we've had the last international break of the calendar year. Uh, when the players come back, what are the sort of different factors that, that govern your selection process in terms of, obviously, if players pick up knocks, they can't play, but if, do you speak to the players? Is it down to the medical staff? Do you make your own assessment? Well, h- how does it all work out to, to sort of facilitate what would be your, your starting eleven? It's a bit of everything you just said. So uh, you talk to, to the players, uh, you want to hear from the medical and the performance staff what they feel about it, then you listen to your own. Uh, technical staff and then you look at the opponent you play and see what is the best uh, uh, team to select so it's a bit of everything uh, but that's not different to any other game the only difference there is now is that um, you always wonder how play- the players that have played in South America how they come back with um, with normally uh, a jet lag uh, as well uh, that's the only difference maybe between team selection, what is the only different argument in a team selection now than for all the other games? Because in all the other games, you also look at the players, get the information from um, from your staff members and look at the opponent. Ibrahim Kanate is probably enjoying the best spell of his Liverpool career, not just in terms of, of his form in matches, but injury-wise, He's because in the past he's... He's had problems with injuries. He didn't make your first starting lineup, but he's he's been in pole position pretty much since then. How have you been enabled him? How have you enabled him to to become more consistent and and to be, you know, the player that that he's you know he's, he's been one of your star performers this season. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's all it's all ways about the player how much effort does he put in to stay fit and then second of all you've got a performance staff and a technical staff to do the best possible thing for him to keep him fit but if the player doesn't buy in himself it's almost impossible for us to keep him fit but we have our ideas about how to keep a player fit and he bought into that so till now that has that has gone really well for him but for a lot of players uh, till now um yeah, the first uh, game he didn't play and there was a reason for that because if you look uh, back at uh, our pre-season games that, that weren't his best games at the moment but to be fair to him uh, he came back like so many others quite late because of the tournament we were already uh, uh, training for a few weeks Jarrell did really well in pre-season so I thought it was uh, in my opinion l- logic, a logical decision to play Jarrell but at halftime, I think we uh, I made the decision that we needed Ibu. And the reason why he went from the United game, which was his first one after him playing, not playing for a long time because he didn't play at um, at the Euros and in the end phase of the season, he didn't play for Liverpool as well. So, But he, he not only bought into um, getting getting fit and do everything for this, but he every time we had a meeting with him, it was... Yeah, I, I wouldn't maybe not do justice to all of the players, but he was the one that I could just 
see that he wanted to learn, wanted to listen, and wanted to improve. Uh, and um, and that's what he did, in my opinion. And that's why his improvement compared to the first game he played in preseason till the first game he played in uh, at Ip- Ipswich was already a massive difference. Rob? Uh, Arne, just picking up on <coughs> Southampton's style there, Russell Martin doing it at the bottom of the table. Just wondering, have you ever had to implement your style differently depending on different levels you've worked at different types of players groups of players that you've worked with yeah in general I think I was very fortunate that I mostly worked at teams that were uh, expected to be top of the table Uh, so I've worked at different levels but at those levels these teams were expected to play uh, in the top of the table um, but yeah, I started off with the under 14, <laughs> uh, where we lost in the first half of the season almost every game. And we just trying to play the same style as we try to do now at Liverpool. And that we worked our way up, uh, during that season. So, um, yeah, I think I've uh, worked at different levels, but mostly, uh, top of the league. And what have you learned off the back of the, the two matches after international breaks? Boris and Chelsea that you'll take into Southampton as you've already mentioned a unique different challenge of being away from home for starters yeah but last time I said before the Chelsea game that I'm not so worried or think that much about the first game after the international break my main worry is always the game plan of our opponent and the, and the style they play that makes a game difficult I, I don't think that uh, back then against Chelsea it was also about the time we started the game was the early kickoff it's it's that that can be have any a bit of influence on the game but most influence always has our own game plan our own intensity we play with uh, compared to the team we face and their game plan and uh, that is always the biggest challenge uh, there is and all the other things are only small or smaller details than the ones I just mentioned Any more for the breakouts? Arna, just on, on Trent uh, and Alisson and Jota do you think they would have any chance for either Real Madrid or the Man City games? Uh, that is something we have to wait and see because I just said that the last few days of a recovery is always the one that is most tricky because then they have to go from isolated training sessions towards a group training session and that step is always the most difficult one so for me it's difficult to judge now and to tell you now it's going to be one two three days or a bit longer so um the only thing I can say is that with 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 Allison and with Jota, I don't expect them to be available for that game. With Trent, it's it's a it's going to be in between. And just with Harvey, he had a frustrating start to the season. His game time was limited. Then he suffered the broken foot in his uh, bone in his foot. Um, how much of a boost is it to have him back around, especially with the schedule you've got in the next six seven weeks? Uh, we always want all of our players available and it was uh, a blow for him and for us that he got injured for such a long time because I think he's been out for three months now now we also have to give him time to come back to his normal level because uh, I just spoke about uh, Ibu uh, Konate that was out from playing football for maybe two three or four months because he didn't play in the end of the season and didn't play in the Euros and then that as a result of that his first game against Man United in pre-season wasn't his best that is something which is completely normal for a football player and this is something we have to take in consideration with Harvey as well yes he's training with us again but that's different than being on the top of your game immediately again so we have to give him time for this as well but I'm very fortunate that he's back especially with the amount of games that are coming up in the upcoming two or three or four or months. I, no? I wanted to ask you a little bit about set pieces. Uh, you've actually scored as many goals from opponent's set pieces as from your own in the <laughs> league this season. Uh, and you're going up against the Southampton side who conceded a third of their goals from set pieces. So considering the great delivery you can call on the team like Simi Castle Robertson, two aerial dominant centre-backs in Canate and Van Dijk, and a pair of six-foot forwards in uh, Gapro and Nunes. Do you think this is an area you're looking to improve on? You like data, don't you? And, uh, last, <laughs> last time you were the one that was telling me that we had 15 uh, players in the, for the national team. How was it this, year, this time? A few less. A few less, but again, I by far the on most. I with everybody else. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, set pieces is, uh, is, uh, is something 
every team, every club uh, at so many leagues at the moment is uh, taking really serious. So that's what we do as well. I think we have great delivery. Uh, we have some players that can um, that are already quite tall and can jump really high. So. Yeah, we're trying to get the best out of that part as well because I always say uh, if a game is tight, a set piece can make a massive difference for you. And uh, that's what we know, what we understand. What we do like till now is that we haven't conceded uh, much in, in terms of set pieces and that's also uh, an important thing. So if we can score a bit more and keep the, the same in not conceding, then uh, we're in a good place. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.